Okay, so as part, uh, good afternoon, and uh, as part of the comparative kinship project, um, which Gordon uh, has widely introduced uh, in the first talk, um, I'm focusing on um, animals and uh, animal economy, and it's a it's an element of the Pictish economy that is completely unknown, or or of which we know very little um, at the moment. So. In this talk, I'll be presenting our very first results, um, basically from four remains that we've recovered from uh, some excavations. <coughs> and to illustrate the lack of archaeological information that we have about the pigs, and especially their animal economy, in uh, 2014, Quarter International published a special issue on agrarian archaeology in Europe. And it was quite telling because the map they produced uh, basically showed Scotland as a dark spot. There was not even one site mentioned, nothing. There was loads for England, uh, a lot for Ireland, um, but nothing for Scotland. Ireland is probably the country in Europe with the best uh, record when it comes to uh, animal economy. It's, um, there's been, uh, well, it's got a good actual record, very good textual record, um, and a good, good uh, paleontological record as well. And the works like uh, Mini, led by Finbar McCormick, um, have shown uh, the importance of cattle in the economy in Ireland in the early medieval period, and especially for dairying. It's a dairying economy. Um, cattle is usually the basic unit for wealth, and it's also used for payments towards the elites. And this is a contrast with England. Uh, England at the time, uh, sheep, though cattle are important, but sheep are much more important in England than they are in Ireland. So it's a different economy between the Anglo-Saxon world and what's happening in Ireland. What does come out though is that the consumption of pigs um, is rated to feasting and uh, often to high status sites. Sorry, the notes are again. Um, so often, um, cattle is not only a source of meat, um, it's also used for traction, ploughing, for dairying, as I mentioned, and also the use of hides, including making vellum. Um, sheets and goats can be used as a source of meat, but they're also used for milk uh, and, importantly, wool. And pigs are uh, usually just a, just a source of meat. Um, so basically, in England, the way England and Ireland benefit from a rich record, and we have no real comparison of that quality for northeast for Pigland or for Scotland, and especially northeast Scotland, it does not mean there are there are no sites that have yield for remains. So here are some key uh, Pictish sites for which there are formal remains. Um uh, Denham Catcher Craig, uh Port Mahomac, Port Goy, and Old Scatness. And as you can see, there's a clear gap for uh, northeast mainland Scotland. But our recent excavations um, have yielded some uh, faunal remains, not big assemblages, nothing comparable to Port Mahomac or even uh, in Orkney or Shetland. But it's, we're starting to um, be able to pull a um, kind of picture of what might be going on at these sites. So Gordon's mentioned these. These are high status sites um, from which we've had some elements of uh, what we can say about um, animal economy. Um, so Berwick has been presented already, but um, it's a high system fortified site. And we've had two seasons of excavation there in 2018 and 2019, and uh, we've got about 3,000 bone fragments. So it might not seem huge, but for uh, this part of Scotland, it's, not too, it's pretty good. Um, unfortunately, the identification rate is pretty low, only 15%. So at the moment, in terms of bones identified to species, we're ranging around 500. Um, so this is Berg Head, so there's basically there a laser on this? Yeah, just tap on. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so this is the upper citadel, this is the lower citadel, and over half of the bones come from the lower citadel in this trench 18. Um, so this is trench 18, which um, is 18 meters long, and you can see it's revealed a large wall. Uh, 
and possibly and some occupational deposits here uh, that are darker colored. So possibly we're looking at a large building uh, for which we don't have the edges. And uh, as you can see, the bones are relatively well preserved, coming from different areas. Um, and we've just skimmed the surface of, this, uh, of these deposits. So we can see this slot is only about barely 10 centimeters. Um, uh, we've gone down about 10 centimeters at the very most. And we've already produced a, a quite decent assemblage for, for, this, uh, for this material. Um, I did a bit of math rapidly. If the total volume, um, if, if we exhibit the whole um, of these black deposits or dark deposits, potentially we could yield from assemblage of around 26,000 bone fragments, which would give us about four or 5,000 identifiable fragments, which then would make it almost comparable to Port Mahomac uh, for the British period of Port Mahomac. Uh, Methotap, uh, recently excavated, good bone preservation, again a very small intervention um, and the bones are well preserved but very only a small assemblage, about a thousand bones. Um, again, hopefully for the excavations we'll, we'll reveal more. Um, and if we look at um, the formal composition, um, what you can see here is cattle is dominant at Burghead. It's also dominant at Mithatap, and we've got sheep and pig uh, on both sides. So the three main domesticates that you get uh, are, are dominant. We get a bit more diversity at Burkhead than we do at Mithatap, but could allege to be a sampling or a size of sample. Um, we get the odd thing like badger and fox, a bit of domestic fowl, some uh, birds, uh, very little fish. As you can tell, it's the same for Mithatap, very little fish. Um, even though it's a coastal site, we get very few fish. Um, so mainly cattle dominated, and at Mithatap, so you can see how the MNIs and manures are very low at the moment. Uh, the interesting one is for Mithatap, pigs in terms of minimum number of individuals are actually higher than cattle. Um, so we are getting to see a picture of, of pig being relatively important at uh, these sites. Um, so to kind of compare, uh, the composition of Burkhead and Mithatap to other uh, British sites. Um, I've plotted them here in terms of percentages, and you can see that for all Pictish sites, uh, cattle are high dominant, um, and pig usually are ranked second, uh, with the exception of the, um, or the Shetland and Orkney sites, which might be an environment, environmental uh, issue there. That, Maybe sheep are better adapted. Rani, uh, we've got some remains from Rani identified by Ingrid Mainland, a uh, small assemblage, um, but you can see there's actually a high number of pigs versus uh, um, compared to cattle. It's actually the site with the highest number of pigs. And pigs overall might be underrepresented. It's been noted for Clatcher Creek, the forget the name, uh, the zoologist who identified the, the assemblage in the 1980s did say maybe because pigs are slaughtered young, their bones don't preserve as well, and maybe uh, pigs are actually more important than they, they seem to appear. Um, so rapidly the graph that explains how it works, it's a ratio of to pig, or cattle to pig, sorry, um, on the horizontal axis, on the vertical it's sheep to pig, Basically, this line here, anything below, uh, uh, pigs are more uh, frequent than sheep. Um, and everything to the right of this line, it means cattle is more dominant uh, than pigs. Um, and here it means that these sites, uh, there's more pigs, and here there's just mainly cattle. So the interesting thing here is that we've got a high status um, sites which seems to cluster here where pigs are relatively important and you've got Port Mahoma the monastic site which is completely at the end of the spectrum uh, with very few pigs. I plotted Iona which is not in, in Pickland it's on the west coast of Scotland but it does seem to have a sim similar signature to Port Mahoma. We've got an outlier in Clatcher Creek. Uh, I've put Dunad which is Dalrata so west of Scotland and it's got a different it seems to have a different signature to our northeast sites and Dunbar is in South East Scotland, it's in Lothian, it's an Anglo-Saxon site and you can see it's got the signature of what's been noted in England with, where sheep are more important. So 
do we have a picnic signature? Well, as I say, if it's too good to, to be true, it's probably not true. The sample's too small for the moment, but um, by adding um, as much data as we can from Ireland and from England, um, maybe something, maybe this pattern will still be visible or not. But what seems clear is that monastic sites and secular sites um, differ. Uh, the quick, uh, so this is ongoing analysis, so we don't have uh, a lot of data yet, but I plotted, um, this is looking at bone fusion uh, for cattle, and basically it's giving you the survival rates per group of uh, age group. And what you can see here is that the survival rate is pretty high, which means that most cattle get slaughtered after 36 months, so they're quite older uh, animals. If, if this was beef consumption, you'd get a, a drop around here when beef, when animals are at their prime to be consumed as beef. Um, and we've got quasi absence of very young calves um, and very few here uh, killed in their prime. And this is actually similar to what Finber McCormick has done for Ireland. And you can see uh, they've got a lot more size with different site types, but he's identified dairying economy in Ireland. And this is uh, the profile. So you can see here uh, very few calves, very young calves and uh, much older individuals. Um, this is what this is part of a uh, dairy economy or the use of cattle for dairying and it seems that we might have a similar pattern here. And the reason you get very young, uh, you don't have very young calves that are slaughtered is because they're, they're used to, uh, um, so the cows produce milk so they need to have the calves till about six months. Um, we've also been, our colleague Kate Britton has also been uh, conducting uh, isotopes uh, analysis, uh, looking at human diet and also looking at diet of animals. And it's also been, uh, the projects have been looking at um, diet and subsistence. Um, and what you can see here, so she's been using uh, various isotopes. Um, so carbon actually gives you the diet. So what you can see here is that our, these are human, uh, these are pigs. Uh, and you can see the variety uh, is actually quite boring. They're all clustered here. What this shows you though, is that there's in between freshwater fish and pigs. So even though salmon are very important on symbol stones, uh, they clearly, uh, they do not, they're not eating salmon. If they're eating salmon, they'd be somewhere around here. So they're in between pigs and freshwater fish, suggesting that pigs are actually an important part of the diet and freshwater uh, fish as well. Um, and you can see ca uh, cattle are, are down here. So. This kind of fits the pattern of cows being used for dairying, also probably traction plowing, um, and uh, for diets, more pigs and freshwater fish. Um, she's also done some analysis on the animals, on, on, on um, animals, and the interesting um, trend here is that um, the sheep, which are there's a few dot, few, few dot, blue dots here. That these are sheep they cluster higher than um, the cow in nitrogen. And um, so she thinks it's possibly uh, salt marsh grazing, which give the sheep a higher value. Um, and the pigs are, are close to, to, the, to the humans. But the pigs have got a very varied uh, that values. And this uh, possibly uh, could be linked to them being reared in woodlands rather than in backyard, in backyard pens behind uh, houses, which you might get in, in the later medieval period. Um, and um, she's also been looking at strontium and sulfur, which gives you the um, where geography the animal uh, is coming from. And the interesting thing here is you can see uh, these are from Burkhead. So sheep and pig are got uh, values that are constrained within a small range, which suggests that they're, they're probably all local. But on the other hand, the cattle have very uh, a very wide uh, distribution of. of um, of values and this suggests that they come from a much wider region than uh, sheep uh, uh, and pigs and this could suggest um, maybe uh, payments to Burkhead coming from a, a larger uh, hinterland so it could suggest the control of Burkhead on a quite large uh, larger region um, so to summarize uh, cattle are predominant at Pictish sites um, and our sites that we've estimated uh, are showing this trend to, to continue. Um, cattle are being used for dairying uh, and come from a wider region than pigs and sheep. Uh, pigs are likely to have been the main, main contributor to, to the diet in terms of protein. Uh, sheep and goats are, it's the same from as Ireland, uh, then 
they're not uh, very frequent. And so generally, uh, it seems that the Pictish economy is something more that of Ireland than that of England at the same time. Um, and where we go next, well, uh, obviously continued as raw fill analysis, um, looking at age of death and um, body part representation, and doing some metrics as well to try and if, understand more if this daring economy by looking maybe separating males from females, and trying to understand more if some of these sites are consumer sites or producing sites or a bit of both. Uh, do we have improved breeds? Um, in Ireland, uh, uh, McCormick has showed that the sheep are not improved, but uh, we don't know for, for Scotland yet. Uh, we'll be releasing funnel collections that don't have uh, uh, available data, text mining textual sources for the few that we have, uh, and we'll generate a large database of funnel remains to include the Irish sites and the English sites, and I think that's key uh, to see if we do have something quite specific for the pigs or if it resembles one of the other two economies. And uh, Kate's going to be doing more biomolecular uh, analysis. Uh, thank you.